Movie Talk. When I was a young boy in college, I remember skipping out of football practice one September when it was incredibly hot. And I remember going into Los Angeles to see Stanley Kubrick's Paths of Glory. And I think at that time it was the first movie of Stanley Kubrick's I'd ever seen. And I was mesmerized by the movie. And so I immediately tried to see every movie, and he hadn't made that many movies. And a few years later, I worked on Spartacus as a stuntman doing some of the uh, warrior work and things like that, just for a few days, just while I was in college. It was like a, a summer activity. And then sort of, I became an actor, and uh, a few years went by, and I got a call from Stanley Kubrick to uh, go to England and, and do a movie called 2001 A Space Odyssey, and I was very elated. I played the astronaut Frank Poole in 2001. I can't say that it took a hell of a lot of research or anything to, to prepare for the picture. The most important thing was to get in good physical condition, basically. And uh, I played the part without a lot of bravado, very quiet, um, sort of a fellow who just analyzed things and was not very effusive the way he explained them to people. And I sort of, uh, I, I just, that's the way I did the part. I did it very simply. I performed it very simply. He seemed to like that. Uh, I did the first few takes in a very simple, matter-of-fact manner like that. He looked at me and I said, would you like to change anything or, you know, do you have something else in mind? And he said, well, that's the way I see it. Listen, Hal, there's never been any instance at all of a computer error occurring in a 9000 series, has there? None whatsoever, Frank. The 9000 series has a perfect operational record. During the filming of 2001, you have to understand that Stanley Kubrick played how every day that we had intercourse or any type of exchange with the computer how it was always stanley and, and, and with stanley's cryptic point of view and his attitude toward life in general his intelligence and his sort of cynical sense of humor the way he sees things sees things it was great thank you for a very enjoyable game yeah thank you the, the man who, who played um, Hal was put in later when Stanley found somebody that had the sound and, and, and the attitude that he wanted. And it was an interesting choice. I mean, a lot of people didn't like the choice or question the choice. And then, of course, as the movie became more famous and more accepted, the choice became more interesting. That's the way it is with any good piece of art. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Man and his machines. I mean, that's the classic comment. I mean, at what point do they start to feel things? At what point does a machine decide that he's going to run the show himself? Whatever that was, 2001 is the first movie ever to deal with that. And I'm sure that someday we'll, we will have to deal with machines that make those choices. Now, the machine is only capable of the things that you program it for, of course. And sometimes the programs conflict in terms of what they cause. And in, in, in the movie 2001, Hal is, becomes paranoid about the mission. And he decides that he's going to take things upon himself and he starts to go awry. This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. I don't know what you're talking about, Hal. What's 2001 about? 2001 about man's encounter with some other life force and uh, how it affects him and what he does and how he reacts to it. There are thousands of opinions of, of which none of them are correct. Um, who in the hell knows? That's my opinion.
talk.